Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we are continuing talking about mathematical statistics. It's part of the advanced math course for teenagers and high school students presented on unizor.com. Uh, that's where actually I suggest you to watch this lecture from because uh, there are some notes, exams, uh, and the whole uh, functionality of the website which allows you to basically enroll and uh, follow the whole progress of your education. Anyway, this is the second lecture on mathematical statistics and uh, let me just um, repeat the main point of the previous um, lecture. That was about purpose of the mathematical statistics. So again, the purpose is, uh, which is kind of an opposite to theory of probabilities, um, having the data from the past random experiments with certain random variable. The mathematical statistics is trying to evaluate the probabilistic characteristics of this variable, like its mathematical expectation, for instance, variance, uh, etc. And uh, based on these um, empirically obtained data, um, we are trying to predict the future of this uh, random variable. Now, one of the extremely important um, detail about this process is that our random experiments, which we are conducting with, uh, with the purpose of getting some values from the, from the random variable, um, they are supposed to be conducted under the same condition again and again and again. Because if conditions are changing, that means that the whole probabilistic picture of this particular random variable is changing. Then the data from the past have absolutely no relevance to something in the future. So, this lecture is about stability. Um, and let me start from a couple of examples. Let's assume that you would like to know What's the probability of getting two aces from uh, the deck of cards? Let's have, let's say, five de decks of cards mixed together, and you want to know what's the probability of getting two aces out from it. And here is the experiment you conduct. Um, you take uh, five decks of cards, shuffle them, and then pick any two of them and you see whether they are aces or not aces. You put aside these two cards and then you pull again a couple of cards, another pair, aces or not aces. Again, put it aside and you write down results. Now, how many times you're pulling the cards? Let's see, you have 52 cards in the deck, you have five decks, so it's 260 cards. You uh, get two cards every time, so it's 130 pairs. And let's assume that during this experiment, during 130 drawing, basically, of a couple of cards, pair of cards, from remaining deck of cards, you have, let's say, three pairs of aces. And then you're saying, you know what, I have conducted this experiment. I did 130 drawings. Three times I've got my aces. So approximately, I mean, you understand it's not precise, but approximately you have 300 of 130s as the probability of getting uh, something like 2.3 maybe percent. Um, so 2.3% that's the probability of getting two uh, aces from, uh, from the uh, deck of cards. Is this right? Well, it's absolutely wrong. Um, let's, l l let's think about it. W what's wrong with this picture? Well, obviously your experiment is not stable. First time you're drawing two cards from 160, the second time you're drawing from 158 because two, is, two cards are already out. So your experiment conditions are changing from drawing to drawing. So you cannot talk about 
any kind of stability. And these numbers are absolutely meaningless. Now, let's talk about something uh, a little bit closer to reality. Let's say you are trying to predict temperature. All right, so now, question is, how can you predict the temperature uh, uh, using some experiments? Well, again, let me start from, from the wrong experiments. You are observing the temperature um, during the whole year, okay, 365 days. You have this observation. And let's say that out of 365 observations, you have 50 times with a temperature from 0 to 10 degrees. You have 100 times uh, with a temperature from 10 to 20 degrees. You have 150 times from 20 to 30. And you have 65 times, so the total will be 365, above 30. Okay, so that's your observations during the year. And now you can say, okay, here is the probability of uh, tomorrow's temperature, today's temperature, whatever. Um, here, here are the probabilities of, of this temperature. With the probability uh, 50, 365, the temperature will be between 0 and 10. With the probability 100 over 365 uh, will be between 10 and 20. And within the probability of 150 over 365, temperature will be this. And this will be the probability of the temperature. So you are thinking that you are getting a complete distribution of probabilities of what will be the temperature, let's say, tomorrow. Is it right? Again, absolutely wrong. And the main reason why it's wrong is, the main reason, there are many reasons, but the main reason is that the Earth is actually rotating around the sun. There are winter, there are uh, uh, summer, autumn, uh, spring, there are different uh, um, times of years, and uh, different times actually have different uh, ranges of, of the temperature. So if today is, let's say, summer, and I'm using these probabilities, these probabilities are absolutely wrong, because most likely all the temperature will be more towards the higher temperatures. And if it's winter, again, the probabilities are wrong, because most likely the, the temperature will be more concentrated around the lower numbers. So this is also wrong. This is just an example of how easily people who do not really um, very attentively um, address this issue of stability of the experiment, how easily they can go wrong. Now, these are kind of extreme cases, and it's obvious that these are wrong. But there are some much less obvious reasons. For instance, with the same climate, there are not only the main reasons, like in this particular case, rotate, ro ro rotation around the, uh, around the sun, but there are some less, maybe, major issues. Like, for instance, volcano uh, was erupting or um, sun's activity actually is changing in some kind of a cycle. Uh, actually, they're talking about like 11 year cycle of changing activity of the sun. And there are even more interesting and more um, maybe uh, unknown really uh, factors which are affecting our climate. Our um, uh, Earth is rotating around the axis, but the axis is not actually directed at the same uh, direction all the time. It also has a cycle of it's called I think it's called precession. The the the, the axis is not exactly um, uh, directed to the to, to, to the same let's say, let's say star. It's circulating around um, certain axis by itself. So that also changes the seasons because if uh, um, if the axis. Um, uh, the rotation of the Earth is more perpendicular to um, orbit around the Sun, um, you have much warmer piece uh, in the middle and colder at the end. 
at the, at the poles. And if it's tilted, then the situation is different. It would be more extreme temperature in summer and in, uh, in winter on the poles. So there are many different uh, um, aspects of, of this climate thing, and nobody actually knows what's more important, what's less important. And I, I, I'm not denying, for instance, the fact that uh, uh, CO2 in the atmosphere which we are producing is a factor. No, it is a factor. But how much this factor is greater than, for instance, sun's activity, or deforestation, or volcanoes, nobody actually knows. So statistics is a very, very um, easy thing to screw up. That's my basic point. Now, let me just go to the right statistics. Right statistics are those statistics when we observe certain random variable under exactly the same conditions time after time after time again. Otherwise, all the mathematical apparatus, whatever we are trying to apply, is just not working. So, let's consider a relatively correct experiment, for instance, with the aces pulling from the uh, deck of cards. Okay, so let's go back. You have, um, let's say, five decks of cards, so you have 260 cards. So you shuffle them first, and then you pull two cards from it. And you write down whether it's aces or not. Now, the correct way to repeat exactly the same experiment is to return these two cards which you have just pulled, whether they are aces or not, back to the deck. So deck again contains exactly the 260 cards. And then shuffle it again, and then pull again, write down the results, put it back into the uh, deck of cards, etc. And that's how you can conduct this experiment for 100, 200, whatever number of times. And then you can say that whatever the statistics are, they actually represent um, uh, correct experimentation when um, random experiment is conducted under exactly the same condition as the next one. And then the statistics will really mean something. As far as... Uh, uh, temperature is concerned, well, probably the best way to, um, well, make it as good as possible, let's put it this way, is um, have a fixed position on Earth and fixed time, let's say 12 noon, something like this, and uh, fixed day, uh, let's say December 31st, um, and then year after year, on December 31st, at that particular location, at that particular time, you measure temperature, and after 100 years or so of measurements, you can say that, you know what, well, our statistics are really representing uh, uh, values of uh, stationary, stable, uh, random experiment, and uh, then whatever the temperature will be, uh, you can really distribute it among certain ranges and that would really correspond much better. Also not ideal, because again there are volca volcanoes which are erupting and there is a CO2 which we are producing, etc. So it's still not ideal, but at least it's much better because the main factor, the rotation around the Sun, would be neutralized by repeating the experiment on exactly the same day at exactly the same location and time. So these are good and bad statistics, so to speak. Now, back to the theory of mathematical statistics. So what we really need is we have to repeat experiment under exactly the same conditions. And what is the result of this experiment? Let's just think about it. Now I'm actually trying to approach a very important point. Um, the result of our experiments are numbers which we are treating as values of the same random variable, let's call it C, at different times under exactly the same experiment conditions. Now, exactly what does it mean? It means that this is 
a value of basically this, the, the same random um, random variable, but I will use uh, index because this is the experiment number, okay? So under one experiment, we've got a random variable which is exactly the same as this one, which means it's exactly the same um, distribution, distribution of probabilities it has. And we actually get the value of this. Now, then again, we've got another experiment independent from the first one under exactly the same condition, which means this variable has again exactly the same uh, distribution of probabilities as this one. And we take this value, and the value is so we measure this one and we get this, we measure this one and we get that, etc. And this is our n nth experiment and again the result of the nth experiment is the random variable with exactly the same distribution of probabilities because all experiments are the same they're all independent of each other but under the same condition and we've got this value xn now what do we want what do we want to do with these numbers well most likely we want to do this mathematical expectation of our random variable c approximately is equal to x1 plus x2 etc plus plus xn divided by n that's what we want to say but do we have the right to say it well let's just think about it and this is a very interesting shift you see this is a random variable these are values which we have received as a result of experiment what i would like to say right now is that from this random variable and these constants I would like to switch to instead of C I'm talking about mathematical expectation of C which is a constant but these things now I'm talking about these things as being an approximation but how do I know that this uh, um, uh, this uh, um, approximation is good well these are all individual values of individual um, random variables so if I will conduct different experiments I will have different values of the same um, random variables so so basically my point is that all of these are actually variable as experiments are conducting one after another. So if I will conduct n other experiments, I will get n other numbers. But I still would like to say that there's some average sum would be close to, to, to this one, right? So how can I evaluate this? Well, here is how. Let me con 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 construct this construction. So instead of using these constants, I will use real random uh, variables and I will use exactly the same composition of these random variables. Now let me ask you this question. Is this as a random variable now? Not a, you see, these are constants. constants uh, th these are constants and this is random variable. Now I'm switching to this is the constant. And these are random variables because we are actually getting random variables and we are trying to approximate these, um, this constant with these random variables. Now, to evaluate the quality, I have to find out what is exact, how close this, regardless of the concrete values, how close these, um, uh, this average of uh, uh, n random variables, how close it is to this number. That's what my my, 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 my purpose of, uh, of the mathematical statistics. If I will show that these, even as a random variable, is relatively close to this one, then my, 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 evaluation, my evaluation is right. Because no matter what numbers I will get as a result of n experiments, since I have theoretically proven that the whole random variable constructed in this particular way is close to this one to the constant then i can say that no matter what kind of results my experiments will show this would be a good approximation for this now 
let's just think about what does it mean that a random variable is close to the constant. Well, it means it doesn't really deviate from this constant very much. More or less um, rigorous definition is if I have a random variable, let's call it eta. If I have a random variable eta, which has certain probabilistic characteristics, but I know that its expectation is certain constant, and I know that her variance around this expectation is very, very small. Whatever, whatever the word small means. So, it's averaging on some constant, and its um, uh, variance around this uh, deviation from standard deviation, whatever, around this particular average is small. Then I can say it's a good approximation. Now, what does it mean small is a different story. For instance, if, uh, for instance, average uh, height of a person uh, in United States of America, let's say, is uh, uh, for, for men, for instance, it's 175 centimeters. Well, then you can say that probably evaluation of uh, people, if this uh, um, deviation from this number is really like within a couple of centimeters, then I can actually take, you know, certain number of people and uh, uh, use their average uh, height and it will be probably close to 175 more or less. So it all depends. Um, if you're talking about uh, measuring on something of this size, all right, and you know that uh, no matter how you measure, your deviation will not be greater than this size. Is it good? Well, for many, pur many purposes it's, it's good. Well, actually, every particular situation requires its own definition of what small actually means. Um, now, in this particular case, how can we evaluate the quality of uh, using this random variable as an approximation of this? Well, let's just think about it. Mathematical expectation Mathematical expectation of eta is exactly equal to mathematical expectation of xi, right? Because uh, you have to sum n goes outside uh, as a factor in the denominator. These are all independent and uh, um, equally distributed, uh, similarly dis distributed random variables. So expectation of each of them is exactly the same as expectation of, uh, of C, so I will have n divided by n, so that's the same. So, this is good, but again, it's really good only if the standard deviation of this is really small. So, let's think about what is the variance of uh, variance of eta. Well, um, uh, if you remember, factor goes out of the variance in square, right and uh, inside you have variance of sum and they are independent so it's sum of variances so it's n times variance of c so n is go going out so variance of eta is variance of c divided by n now this is very important this n it means that the more experiments we conduct the more precise our evaluation will be because the variance goes down as n is increasing. So, we have basically satisfied our requirements of um, uh, expectation of this to be the same as the constant which we are trying to evaluate and the variance of this random variable actually can be as small as we want. So, first we have to obviously establish what exactly we want uh, from the variance, and that's basically um, a, a choice which depends on, on conditions, on human conditions, experiment conditions, whatever. And then we can choose number n to satisfy this particular um, requirement. Um, so, 
that's great. However, how can we satisfy it if we don't know variance of C? And we don't really know variance of uh, in expectation of C either. We are saying that this is a good approximation for the um, for the constant, which is the expectation of, of C, because the expectation of this is equal to expectation of this. Okay, fine. That means it's a good approximation. But now I'm saying that the variance of this is one nth of variance of C, but we don't know the variance variance of C. So how can I basically? Uh, find out what my n should be if I don't know variance of C. Well, again, I can approximate variance of C using the same the same strategy. Now, what is this? Okay, how can I approximate? Again, I will use this, and then I will use this. C1 minus eta square plus etc plus Cn minus eta square divided by n, right? That might be, might be. So I'm averaging my um, my uh, square deviation from from estimate. So I'm not really uh, in, in theory. If you want to calculate variance, you have to have the constant, which is the uh, mathematical expectation, but I don't know the mathematical expectation. I know only the, uh, uh, the, the, the estimate of this, approximate value of this. So I can use it to say that this is approximately variance of, and this is approximately mathematical expectation. So these are all approximations. Now, how good is this? approximation that's a different story you see how complicated the whole story is you cannot really find out what's the proper number n without knowing the variance of c you don't know the variance of c but you can uh, evaluate it but in the evaluation you are not using expectation of c because you don't really know you're using again evaluation of this expectation it goes more and more, more and more complex. So that's why mathematical statistics is so complex, basically. Um, now, what else did I not cover? Uh, yes, I think that's actually everything I wanted to talk about. So let me just summarize a couple of things. First of all, an absolutely mandatory condition for conducting statistical experiments which you would like to use as the source of data to evaluate certain things, uh, certain random variables and its behavior in the, in, in the future, is stability of the experiments and their independence. So results, C1, C2, Cn, etc., they are, they must represent um, the random variables which are exactly the same which was exactly the same distribution as C so they should be independent from each other because experiments must be independent and identically distributed there is even abbreviation I I D independent and identically distributed uh, uh, random variables so this is a, a must this is how you should conduct experiment and now you can say that hey that's impossible and you're absolutely right because for instance if you're doing experiments with the climate for instance like predicting the temperature etc you obviously cannot exactly uh, repeat experiment as you did let's say a day ago or something like this because conditions are changing not only rotation around the sun but lots of other things so well that's a problem and um, to address that problem might be, and this is completely um, uh, unknown territory, let's put it this way. Uh, you can think about, maybe they're not exactly independent, but they're almost independent. Maybe they're not exactly uh, identically distributed as this, but they but they have distribution which is very close to this 
and then maybe you can still use this as an variation maybe losing a little bit of precision but still getting something reasonable but now pay attention to the words which I just said so I said maybe they are not exactly independent but almost what does it mean almost independent you need some kind of a quantitative measure of independence which is very very difficult I mean there is something some concept like correlation and stuff like this but that's that's difficult and another thing that the distribution is not exactly the same as this one but almost the same again what does it mean almost how can I judge how one distribution of probabilities is different from another quantitatively it's not easy there are many different approaches people were trying to address these problems many people address it differently and all of them make sense <laughs> so basically it's not like a established um, completely established uh, theory I just wanted to emphasize how difficult it is and how accurately you should really um, approach any kind of statistical results whatever is presented to you whether it's about uh, predictions uh, for um, uh, who will be the president of the United States or what will be the temperature uh, in 50 years from now on earth I mean all these numbers well they're good to have it but you should always approach them very very cautiously and with a big grain of salt let's put it this way so in theory and we will probably be talking about theory only i do consider the experiments which are conducted prior to evaluation of the probabilistic characteristics as independent and identically distributed as this one and then I will try to construct certain formulas like this one, like this one, which will allow us to use these concrete values of these random variables uh, to evaluate certain characteristics of um, our random variable in question. <sighs> That's it. <laughs> I hope I scared you a little bit today because I really wanted you to understand that statistics is uh, not exactly as mathematically rigorous kind of a thing um, as you might um, actually think and um, uh, you have to really approach it very very cautiously alright that's it for today thank you very much and good luck